you guys specialize in, in previs. Um, I know previs is not a new concept, but people still get very confused as to exactly what previs is. Can, can you guys speak a little bit as to why previs? Why the importance of previs? Um, well, I think the importance of previs is basically to save money in any production. Um, it helps filmmakers uh, visually see their shots before they go out and shoot um, for planning for technical solutions and for uh, an overall vision of the film before it goes out to, uh, to be made. Let's speak a little bit about the process of, of previs. Uh, I know that it involves creating a lot of different types of, of programming and, uh, and I'm sure a lot of it is proprietary programming. How do you guys go about developing previs? If I could speak to the beginning of that question a little bit. One of the reasons that previs actually exists is actually uh, because we don't have to do a lot of programming. Not to, not to contradict the question, but, but the, the irony of this um, whole thing is that the democratization of and readily available technology, both hardware and software, uh, in the bedrooms of any kid anywhere in the world is really why Previs exists. Um, visual effects historically has, has needed this gigantic infrastructure and this need to create new technology continually in order to stay ahead of the curve. Whereas Previs exists in a mold where we're simply taking off the shelf tools and hardware, putting them together, putting great artists behind them and letting them go and, and see what they come up with. So from that standpoint, Previs traditionally has been an off-the-shelf um, kind of medium. Although today we are engaged in a lot more development and trying to push the boundaries of what actual filmmaking is and not just what Previs is. Sure. The product sometimes looks so good that it looks like you could just take that and use that as your finished piece. One thing that we pride ourselves on because Previs, the pixels that we create for Previs never really make it out of the screen for any of the mediums that we've worked for. So the pride in our work comes when the work that we've done has been successfully translated to the screen, whether it be the film screen, the TV screen, the computer screen. One of the things we work very hard towards is creating a process by which what we've done can be translated faithfully. Now whether that means at a hardcore technical level, i.e. we're pushing our actual Maya files to the final effects vendor, or if it means doing top-down plans so that the guys pushing the camera on the, on the Techno Crane 60 can, can you know, match what we've animated in the computer or whatever it happens to be, we work very hard to make sure that the effort we've put in can be duplicated through to the finals, whether it's, like I said, very technical, or if it's more touchy-feely and has to do with just helping people understand what's happening behind the curtain. Everything that we do is in the service of the story of the film and for the director's service. We try to remove technology, remove the geekiness of it, so that anybody can come in and have a positive experience and feels free to be creative and tell their story and not have to worry about technology getting in the way of we try to share and make it as easy as possible for the director to understand so he doesn't get confused with you know um, you know too much technicality so he can just get as creative out as you know fast as he can you know so it is it's it's a big difference you know it does help when a director knows you know every single thing about what we're doing and he gets really intricate but at the same time when you know a director is more creative you know it's it's a little bit more fun too because you can just really go crazy and just have you know just a, it's almost like a party in the computer you can do whatever you want